Well, spring break may be over for some, but Congress is finally taking theirs starting today. Lawmakers are in recess for the next two weeks, but that doesn't mean everything they are working on got done. The ink barely dry on some bills, others left in limbo. Uh, legislation won't be discussed until they come back. So what did they get done this week in Washington? Our insider, News Nation DC Bureau Chief Mike Vaquera, he joins us live right now. And Mike, how are you? So Mike, members hey. of Congress are gone, <laughs> scattered back to their states and districts for the next two weeks. But that doesn't really, yeah. that doesn't really mean anything unusual, does it? Right. For Washington insiders, look, the traffic is a lot better around Capitol Hill. But as an insider, if you and I were to go on a little tour through the Capitol, the only thing you would see and hear at this point, Kelsey, would be the sound of our own footsteps. You wouldn't see much else aside from a bunch of statues and granite pillars. This is the typical case with Congress, and it surprises a lot of people. I'm going to show you the typical official House calendar. This is the official calendar for the House of Representatives for the month of April. And if you see, they were in this week, the end of what for them is a marathon, six weeks straight of working since the State of the Union, but off for the next two weeks, not to be back till the last week in April. And then guess what? They're going to start May by being off again, back in their districts, scattered throughout the land, back in their states. Some of them go on congressional delegations overseas. Uh, this year, all told, the House of Representatives is scheduled to be in a mere 112 days here in Washington. Well, meanwhile, the average Joe or Josephine works about 249 days a year. So nice work if you can get it. Uh, if you're a member of Congress, they will argue that they're back in their districts. They're meeting with constituents. Uh, they are flying back and forth, traveling here and there, meeting with uh, various civic groups or business groups. Uh, but as far as being in Washington, they're really not here even half the year, Kelsey. Well, Vic, this is an election year for Congress. They're back home raising money and getting ready for yeah. their campaigns for the next two weeks. How much time do they spend simply trying to get reelected? So it's shocking. Yeah, Kelsey, I've been talking to members for years and candidates for years about this. You know, when you first come to Congress, it costs, first of all, the average House race is now up to a little over $2 million a year. The average Senate race every six years is something like $15 million a year, according to the Center for Responsive Politics. So what does that mean? That mean mem means members of Congress have got to be constantly on the phone and raising money, dialing for dollars. If you were to go over to the Democratic National Committee building here on the Hill or the RNC, the Republican National Committee building, you would see members going in and out. They're not allowed to uh, solicit funds from inside the official Capitol building, but they have to go to their party headquarters and they do it all day long. There's a stream coming back and forth. One of the most amazing things about this being a member of Congress, to my mind, is when you get, come to Congress, you go to a party orientation in the Capitol, they hand you a slip of paper. Here's the suggested way we suggest that you spend your day four hours a day dialing for dollars, calling donors to try to pay for those campaign ads, to try to pay for that campaign staff, all for a gig that pays $174,000 a year, Kelsey. Well, so what, what have they accomplished this year so far, Vic? And really, what is left? That's what people are all wondering. Yeah. yeah. You know, for a campaign year, there's been a certain amount that's been done here, a certain amount that's been accomplished, considering the Democrats control both houses of Congress uh, and the White House. Of course, just today we saw the confirmation of uh, Ketanji Brown Jackson at the White House, the, the celebration there. They passed $14 billion in aid for Ukraine, a rare bipartisan moment uh, when it passed the House and the Senate. Uh, they took away just late last night before leaving town, jetting out of town. Uh, the took away the most favored nation trading status of Russia in retaliation for what they're doing in Ukraine. They passed that anti-lynching bill, the Emmett Till an, uh, anti-lynching bill, uh, the Postal Service rescue, and the, they've also done the bare minimum uh, function of Congress, and that is to fund the government. The government hasn't closed this year, which is rare in and of itself. What's left undone, $10 billion in the fight against COVID. Uh, they also have a China comp competition bill, billions of dollars, that they're going to send to the semiconductor industry principally uh, to try to compete against China. That's what Republicans and Democrats are joining up against. But as we get closer to the election, it becomes much less likely that they're going to do anything. And of course, the president's build back better agenda, uh, voting rights legislation uh, and immigration reform, all things favored by Democrats stand little chance to no chance of being passed this year. Kelsey.
Still so many still on the table that build back better plan. Right. So many questions there. Mike Vicara, right. DC Bureau Chief, thank you so much for your time. Okay, thank you. Also happening today in DC history in the making. At the White House as Katanji Brown Jackson becomes the first black woman on the Supreme Court. President Biden declared her confirmation as a moment of real change. Jackson will take her place on the court this summer when just Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven unbiased coverage.